Hello everyone. In the last lectures, I discussed Laplace transforms and first shifting theorems. And today, I am discussing about inverse Laplace transforms. Welcome you all. So, inverse Laplace transforms. Let me first uh, consider the definition. So, if we have L of f of t, the Laplace transform of a function f of t, this is denoted by capital F of s. Then, this f of t, the small f of t, this function is called the inverse Laplace transform of capital F of s. And we can denote the inverse by the symbol L inverse. Okay. So, in short, symbolically, we can express this as L inverse of F of s is equal to F of t. Okay. This is the inverse Laplace transform of a function F of t. Now we are considering the inverse Laplace transform of some standard function. In Laplace transform also, we considered uh, seven different functions and I discussed whose Laplace transform. And here also, we are considering seven such results. So, in the previous result, when I am giving you the RHS, can you say the LHS? So, like that, we are writing all these seven results. Okay, you just go through these results. The first result is L inverse of C by S. That is equal to C. So, can you recall in the case of Laplace transform, L of C, what is it? It is C by S, right? So, L inverse of C by S is it is C. So, L inverse of C by S is equal to C. Now, the second result is L inverse of 1 by S raised to N. L inverse of 1 by S raised to N. What is its inverse? Its inverse is T raised to N minus 1 divided by N minus 1 factorial. T raised to N minus 1 divided by N minus 1 factorial. We know this is applicable for all the positive integers. Okay. We know L of T raised to N. What is the result? It is N factorial divided by S raised to N plus 1. Okay. So you keep S raised to N plus 1 here and move N factorial to the side. So we have T raised to N by N factorial. Okay. If it is one, S raised to N plus 1, the LHS becomes T raised to N by N factorial. N plus, if it is N plus 1, we have N factorial and T raised to N. Degree is 1 less. Okay. So here we consider 1 by S raised to N. The power is N. So you have to reduce 1. 1 less. So T raised to N minus 1 by its factorial. N minus 1 factorial. Okay. This is the second result. And by using this result, can you just calculate here L of 1 by L inverse of 1 by S square? What does it? By using this result, instead of N plus 1, we have 2. So, 1 less. So, T raised to 2 minus 1. It is 1 divided by 1 factorial. So, T. Okay. What is L inverse of 1 by S cube if the power is 3? This is equal to T square divided by 2 factorial. So, like this we can evaluate L inverse of 1 by S raised to L. Now, look at the next result. See, for what function the Laplace transform is 1 by S minus A? Can you recall this? We know for A raised to A T, the Laplace transform is 1 by S minus A. So, L inverse of 1 by S minus A, this is equal to A raised to A T. 1 L inverse of 1 by S minus A. Suppose it is L inverse of 1 by S minus 1. So, what will be the inverse? It is A raised to T. Okay, so like that we can find inverse of these types of functions. Now, you next consider L inverse of 1 by S square plus A square. What is its inverse? Its inverse is 1 by A sin 80. How? So, if you recall, 
call we have L of sin 80. What is L of sin 80? L of sin 80 is it is A divided by S square plus A square. A divided by S square plus A square. So I am keeping only 1 by S square plus A square on RHS. You take A to this side. Okay. Then if you are applying L inverse on both sides. See. L inverse on both sides. So we have L, L inverse and here also L inverse. I am taking L inverse on both sides. L, L inverse get cancelled. And here we have L inverse of 1 by S square plus A square. When you are taking A to this side, it is sin 80 by A. So that I wrote here. 1 by A sin 80. So always remember L inverse of 1 by S square plus A square is 1 by A sin 80. Okay. So what will be 1 by S square plus 4? If it is S square plus 4, the result is 1 by 2 sin 2t. 1 by 2 sin 2t. Okay. So this is inverse of 1 by S square plus A square. Now come to this result. L inverse of S by S square plus A square. We know if S is in the numerator, surely the function is cos. Okay. For L of cos A T, the result is S by S square plus A square. Therefore, L inverse of S by S square plus A square is nothing but cos A T. Okay. Now next up. L inverse of 1 by S square minus A square. If minus we have in the denominator, surely that is a hyperbolic cos or sin. Now look at the numerator. It is 1. Okay. If it is A, we have sin H. And that A we should divide in this case. Okay. So for L inverse of 1 by S square minus A square, the result is 1 by A sin H 80. Sin H means it is the hyperbolic sine function. Now the last result. L inverse of S by S square minus A square. Since it is minus, surely it is sin H or cos H. Now look at the numerator. It is not constant but the parameter yes. Sir. So, so surely it is cos H 80. Cos H means it is a hyperbolic cosine. So L inverse of S by S square minus A square is equal to cos H 80. See we need all these seven results in order to do problems based on inverse Laplace functions.